What is a sin that does not lead to death? 1 John 5, 15 through 17. We will read that and then answer, well, how can that be? When you look at uh, 1 John 5, John writes, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the, pet the petitions that we have asked of him. And if anyone, and here it is, is, it's kind of the crux of the question right here. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. And I'm going to hit on both of these so that we kind of understand both sides of this, and that I think one will help the other in how we, uh, in how we deal with it. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. So there is one, you notice, that we, we can pray for with our, regarding our brother. And then there's one that says, we, you know, well, you can't pray for him in that one. And that's the sin that leads to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is sin not leading to death. Okay, well, let's hit that first one. What is the sin leading to death? What, do we, you know, what does it mean by a sin leading to death? Well, we know that you know, if the wages of sin are death, then every sin potentially can lead to that spiritual death, can it? And we, don't, we hope that no one gets that far. But if you look at 1 John 1, 9, again, we see this as it's brought up. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we know that if we confess our sins, it is possible to, to have that forgiveness, isn't it? I know if I petition God and I just, you know, and, and I just break down or I just you know, bring it to him and apologize and I repent of it and turn my life in a different direction, that I can have that forgiveness. We need that forgiveness. We need it to be available to us. And thankfully that John gives us these words that if we confess our sins, that we can have those forgiven. But what if we don't? What happens if we don't confess it? You see, by implication, by saying that, you know, that if we confess our sins, there's a condition right there, then that means something will be taking place if I don't confess my sins. And we know that there are people in the world even, the, even in the Christian world, that refuse to repent of sins that they have committed, refuse to confess of it. Well, what, what if we don't confess those sins? Well, by implication, whoever does not confess and repent are not going to have it forgiven. And if they don't have it forgiven, then there's the sin that leads to death. Because if I, can't, if I have a sin that can't, will not be forgiven, but you notice the only way that that cannot be forgiven is if I refuse to repent of it, if I refuse to confess that sin. And there are sins that people commit that they say, I don't want to, you know, they, they do something and they say, I don't want to get out of this, or I'm not ready to get out of this, or I don't want to give this up. I don't want to, you know, this is a part of my life. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to deal with this right now. And it's sad when that happens because there's, you know, every soul is precious to God. I mean, you realize the value of a soul to him. You realize that the very, that the souls mean, that souls mean so much to him that he even went to the cross to begin. And he died on that cross so that every person who has sin is able to turn their life around. That is the love that Christ has for us. And when we don't confess it and we say, I don't want anything to do with it, Folks, that breaks his heart because he wants that relationship. And so whoever does not confess, there is the sin that's leading to death, and that is the one that we don't confess, the one that we don't want to take care of. But then we also see in here that a couple of times mentioned that there is a sin that does not lead to death. Well, what is that one? Well, it's the same condition, isn't it? If we repent and if we do confess then it's not going to lead to death since we have been forgiven. It's possible for us to be forgiven. God's not going to, you know, God's not going to hold those sins over our head. If I confess them and I repent of them, God's not going to, you know, he's not going to dangle them over and say, hey, guess what you did? Those have been already been, you know, he's not going to, 
You know, there's another part of Scripture that says he's going to forget those sins. That doesn't mean that, they're, you know, that he's, you know, his memory's bad. It means he, you're, that we are not going to be held accountable for those sins because we have repented of them that I'm not going to do it. And so there is a sin that does not lead to death. What is it? Same kind of, you know, same thing. If we confess it, it's not, you know, that we have been forgiven. It also gives us the ability to pray for someone who is willing to confess and willing to repent. And this is a, you know, this is a big thing right here because we see brethren that have sinned, they have fallen away, they have made decisions that we know they shouldn't have made. And what do we do? Every week we pray for them, don't we? We put them on the prayer list. We pray. The elders pray for them. We pray for them in Bible classes. And we just, what, you know, and, and what do we say? Well, Lord, please, you know, let, let their heart be softened. Why can we not say anything more than that? Because that's not on us. I can't pray someone into heaven. It's impossible. I can't pray that their sins are going to be taken care of. What if they don't repent of it? And so we, I don't think there's anything wrong with praying for them, that their hearts might be softened. We pray that maybe by God's providence, someone or something can happen in their lives that they're going to realize what they have done and wake up and deal with it and take care of it. But that's the most we can do. I can't, no matter, how, you know, no matter how articulate our prayers are, no matter what kind of position we hold, no matter how respected we are and how much we, even, we might love that person, I can't change them with my prayer. I can't do anything more than what they're willing to do. There's no person that can pray for me with the sin that I might have been committed. That has to be on me. And the same goes for you. And so while we care about a person greatly, we can pray that, you know, if a person, you know, it's great when we see a person willing to confess it, isn't it? And they are willing to repent. And we do see that person come forward. And we do talk to that individual. And we do pray for them that their faith might be strengthened, that they might make a good choice. You know, and we pray that the Lord will be with them and that they can feel the love, that they can feel the you know, everyone just, just how compassionate people are. But we can't pray for someone to be pardoned of, for sin of which they will not repent. And so there's the, there is the difference between that. The sin that does not lead to death, how, is it, you know, how can that be? It's the sin that we repent of. Not going to lead to death. And aren't we glad that those sins are not held over our head? To be cleansed from all unrighteousness is every Christian's goal.